right, so welcome back. We're going to start talking about closures in Swift. Um, so my little example here of a closure, there's also a concept in art of a closure. It's where something doesn't exist, so this triangle doesn't exist. Uh, but your eye sees a triangle uh, because of the circles with the, uh, the pie shapes that are missing. So that's a closure in art. Closure also means something uh, in programming before Swift uh, claimed the word, like there was a, a library from Google called Clojure. Uh, that was their JavaScript library. Uh, it still exists. Uh, but the concept, what it really means is if, you're, if you've got a variable uh, and then you've got like an anonymous function or an anonymous class, you can actually refer to that variable inside there and also outside. If you've done a lot with Java, you had to call it final, then you could access it like inside the anonymous class. And that ability to have a, a, um, a variable in one place and then access it inside the callback is called a closure. One of the things that you do a lot in Swift um, is you start passing in functions to other functions. It started to become really popular. Like in the last five years, like all of their APIs started using blocks is what they used to be called. Um, and it's just really easy to pass functions into other functions. And it does a lot of nice things for you. If you happen to be a JavaScript developer, you'll be like so familiar with this, it's painful, right? Because almost all of JavaScript is closures, right? So uh, Swift decided to coin the term uh, closure for when you pass a function into another function. They've got some expression syntax that makes it easier uh, and much cleaner to do. So here's the long definition. So let's go ahead and start off by opening up our closures playground. All right, so it should kind of look like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to play with uh, the reduce function. But what we're going to do is we're just going to look for the number of values uh, over five uh, in this array. There's a lot of ways that we could do this. What we're going to do is we're going to use a function called reduce. Um, so reduce is a built-in function that lets you basically take an array or, or some collection um, and break it down to only one number. So this example, we're trying to look for the ones that are over five. So reduce is a great function to take that whole array and like look at it and, and break it down into one value. So the reduce function receives two parameters. First, it receives an initial value, uh, which you can see it's u because it's generics. Uh, so Swift uses generics, which I'm not going to go into a lot, uh, but it's similar to ger generics in Java. And then the other thing it does is you have to pass in a function. So this function, you can see that what it does is it receives two parameters and it returns a parameter. They're called u, t, and u. So the u's have to be the same type of, um, of object as what the initial value was, uh, but the t could actually be something different. So this is our goal. So we're going to count the values that are over 5. So our initial value is just going to be 0. And then what we want to do is we want to pass in a function uh, to do this combine operation. What we're going to start with is we're going to start with actually making a separate function and then passing it in. I'm going to call this function combine for over 5. Uh, and so it's a function. Uh, it's going to receive two parameters. Um, what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to work only with ints. So I'm going to call them running total, uh, which is an int. And then I'm also going to call it current value, which is an int. And this function needs to also return an int. So I chose these function names because I know what the combine function does. Uh, it passes you in two values. One is kind of like the running total uh, of whatever you've got. And so you have to return that for the next time the function is called. You can learn a lot more about reduce. And really what we want to do is we just want to uh, decide, um, is the current value greater than 5? Uh, and I'm going to use a ternary here. So if it's greater than 5, then I'm going to take whatever the running total was and add one to it. So if I had five so far, uh, this one was also bigger, I'm going to return six. If it is not bigger, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return the running total. Um, so if it was, you know, we'll say there's two so far and the value of this one is, is below five, then we're just going to return the two again. So that's how combine works. And what we can do is we can actually just pass this function in um, now we're not calling the function, we're just passing the function in. So the way it, it looks is, is you just pass it in with no parameters. And you can see that it got 4. Uh, so 4 is correct because it, it found the 10, it found the 8, it found the 6, it found the 1,000. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to prove it to yourself, you could change the 1,000 to something that's smaller. Uh, and you can see it works. So the way we've done it here is this is a closure. 
uh, because technically a closure is just passing in a function to another function. Uh, but it's not really what people expect when you say, hey, I'm using Swift closures. Usually a closure is anonymous. So like this name combined for five, it won't exist. And what you'll actually do is you'll actually pass in uh, that function uh, instead of actually giving it a name. Now, if you were a JavaScript developer, um, the syntax that you would expect is that you would delete the name of it, um, and you would just say func, uh, and then it would look just like it always does, right? So it would say, you know, what the parameters are coming in, uh, what its return value is, uh, and it would look like that. Obviously, you can see by the number of syntax errors on my screen, that's not how they chose to do it, right? Um, so they chose to use a different syntax, and what they decided to do is they decided to put the opening curly brace where the word func uh, is here, and then where the uh, curly brace was before, they put the word in. Uh, so it kind of looks like this. Uh, there is reason uh, that they chose to do this. They, they could have obviously done it the way JavaScript did, which is very simple. Uh, but if they had done it that way, uh, then you're required to be very verbose. Um, and they've got some tricks coming, which we'll look at in the next video, uh, about how you can make these closures less verbose. Uh, but you can see that this uh, this totally works. So you can see the value is four right there. Uh, if you wanted to see it on its own line, uh, you know, you could just uh, print it out here. So this looks kind of gibberishy um, in that the closures kind of have some weird syntax going on, uh, but they, they break down pretty easy, right? So you don't say the word func at all. You just say opening uh, curly brace. Uh, by the way, this is probably why they made dictionaries be brackets so that they could free up curly brace for closures. And then you say what the inputs and the outputs of the function are. Uh, and then you say the word in, where you used to have the, the, the curly brace. And then you simply write your function here. It just so happens that this function received two parameters and returned a parameter. And it kind of looked like this. All right, that's the summary for, for verbose closures. Uh, come back next time, and we'll show you some of the shorthand tricks that you can get away with.